Hi folks, um, today I, I thought I would uh, chat to you and maybe try and explain to you um, the, the ancient uh, money system that was in use in Scotland in 1743 um, and actually was still in use um, in 1971 and I remember it well. Um, so I'm sure many, uh, many other people in the United Kingdom and, and also um, in other countries around the world will remember it also. Um, but I suspect that many others uh, might find it a bit weird. Um, so the system we used was called LSD, um, which we felt or understood it to stand for pounds, shillings and pence. LSD, pounds, shillings and pence. But it actually originated thousands of years ago in the Roman Empire. And the, the phrase LSD comes from the, the Latin words libre, solidi and denari, um, which were the Roman uni units um, of currency. Um, so in Scotland, what we had was uh, pounds, shillings and pence, uh, and the Romans actually had libre, solidi and denari. So denari, for instance, was um, their pennies, their, their basic uh, starting point. Um, so in Scotland, what we had was um, there were 12 pennies in a shilling. I know this is going to sound a bit complex, but don't worry, as we go through it all, I'm sure you'll pick it up. There were 12 pennies in a shilling, 20 shillings in a pound. So every pound, therefore, contained 240 pennies. So I know this system will, will certainly, it seems, I know, seems very strange to younger people um, and also to, to people who live in countries that have long had um, decimal systems which are based on units of, of 100, for instance. Um, however, this ancient system did have its advantages. Um, for instance, uh, a long time ago, or not that long ago actually, many, many items, um, especially food stuffs, um, were, were traditionally sold or were traded in units of 12, um, wh which would be called a dozen. Um, and so therefore using this system, if a, if a dozen eggs, for instance, cost four shillings, it was very easy to calculate that each egg cost four pence. Um, so you can maybe understand a little bit there how, how this system helped traders and people uh, long ago. So this system w was widely used uh, in Europe um, in, med in medieval times um, and with the rise of the British Empire uh, it became really the standard monetary system uh, in use in many countries throughout the world. Um, in America it was in use prior to the American War of Independence. But um, 10 years after the war, America decided, the United States of America uh, decided to opt for, for a decimal system, uh, the one they have today. So how did this ancient system work and what was involved in it? So um, what I'm gonna try and do today, and it may or may not work because the camera may not quite like it. Um, I'm gonna try and show you some of these coins because um, when Britain changed over uh, I decided I would keep um, one of every coin uh, for the future and so I, I, I put away one of every coin because just for posterity's sake I suppose. Um, so I'm going to show you now uh, the, the, the coins that we used in the system um, and, and really what they were worth. So I'm hoping that you will be able to see them. Some of the smaller ones I think we may struggle with. But however, I'm going to start. So the very first coin, the smallest coin was called a farthing. And I'm going to try and see if the camera will, there you go. It's just a tiny little coin. And it was worth one quarter of a penny. So four farthings would equate to one penny. Um, now actually when I was growing up, even by then the farthing w was really not being used. But, um, there were still sweets, for instance, that you would get that would be four for a penny. And that goes back to the farthing. Next up the line um, was a 
a coin called the half penny. It really would be called a halfpenny, so it would be abbreviated to halfpenny, um, and it was worth half a penny. Um, and this one has the symbol of I think Sir Francis Drake's golden hind on it. All the coins have different symbols on them. They all have on the reverse um, the head of the monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. So all these coins I'm showing you come from the late 60s, um, just prior to decimalisation. So here is the, the penny. It's a big coin for your pocket. Um, and it tended to feature Britannia on the front. So one penny, 12 of these and a shilling. 240 of these in a pound. One penny. Quite a big coin. Next up was the three penny piece but actually what we called it was thruppence uh, thruppence thruppenny piece it would be called and it had a many sided now I don't know how many that would be so like hexagonal or something like that many sided coin and this one has portcullis on the front of it next up is the six penny piece or called a sixpence yeah, the camera's not quite liking that one, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, anyway, that small coin is worth six pennies. And now you can see we're moving into silver. So the cheaper coins, the coins that are worth less, were originally made in bronze, and these, bronze I think, yeah, and then these became silver. I th an interesting point about the, the sixpence was they were, this one is not made in silver, the latter ones weren't, but originally they were made in silver, and up until quite Later on they were made in silver and it was a lucky thing to have uh, at Christmas time and the Christmas puddings the mothers used to hide silver sixpences in the Christmas pudding um, and it was very lucky for you to get one and you'd be able to keep it um, and June used to have um, some old silver sixpences that she kept just for that I think she still has them actually um, so they were they get hidden away in the Christmas pudding um, now next up is the shilling, so from pounds, shillings and pence, we're now moved up, so this is the, there we go, this is the shilling, so it is worth 12 pennies, and there are, yep, and there are 20 of these in a pound, so this was a shilling, and it was sometimes called a bob, so five shillings sometimes would be abbreviated as, could you give me five bob? <laughs> next up is the two shilling piece or this was called a florin I meant to find out actually why it's called a florin and I forgot sorry about that there will be a, a reason why um, but that is two shillings then there was a coin a coin called the half crown let me see if I can get that in focus here yeah. um, so it was worth two shillings and six pence which I know sounds a little bit crazy, but it was worth half of a crown. A crown was worth four shilling, eh, five shillings, and there were four crowns in a pound. So you, you maybe get a feeling for the units that are being used here. Um, so that's a half crown, two and sixpence. Then there was the crown. Now, at this time, the crown really had stopped being used. It wasn't really in circulation. And what they tended to do was to um, dis issue them for specific, uh, I suppose you might say, ceremonial purposes. So this was one uh, that was produced in 1965 on uh, the death of Winston Church Sir Winston Churchill. And my mother very kindly bought me one, um, which I kept. But really, um, by the time uh, I was growing up, the crown was no longer in circulation. So that was all the coins. Um, and then we had uh, the very first note, which was called the 10 shilling note. So this is a 10 shilling note, uh, featuring the Queen on the front and Britannia, I think, on the reverse. Um, so there were two of these in a pound, <laughs> and this is 10 shillings. Uh, an interesting story about this was I did keep a 10 shilling note at that time, but 
you know it was worth a lot of money in those days now today 10 shillings is 50 pence so if you can calculate 50 pence it's well in the currencies today it's roughly 50 euro roughly 50 cents uh, US cents and things like that but when I was putting this money away this was worth a lot of money and I had put one away and then I had to go and um, spend, use it to buy something um, and then my wife June very very kindly bought me this one so all the rest of the coins you've seen um, they were just ones that I put away from my pocket but the 10 shilling note I put away regrettably I had to, to spend it and go back um, and then above that there was a one pound note now I don't actually have a one pound note from that time but this one is from the 1980s which was just 10 years after decimalisation um, so that's a Royal Bank of Scotland one um, so uh, we really only had only the notes produced by Scottish banks the coins were all produced by uh, the Royal Mint um, so that's the, that's the coins and you could sense that the, the, that, um, the, the amounts that were uh, involved there, fours and twelves and twenties, you know, it does get a, a bit confusing. However, uh, I'll just run through quickly now with you the way that you would write this because again the, the way that we, we would write amounts of money is completely different to nowadays. Um, so for instance, um, if, if an item costs two pennies and three farthings, it would be written uh, thus, and it would be described. It would be described verbally as tuppence three farthing. So a lot of words were abbreviated. Uh, two pence becoming tuppence, tuppence three farthings. Um, if an item costs uh, one penny and one half penny, it would be written like this, um, and it would be described as a penny halfpenny. So that's how you say to somebody, "Give me a penny halfpenny." If an item costs nine pennies. It would be written like this, uh, and it would be described as nine pence. Um, if an item costs four shillings and six pennies, it would be written this, like this, um, and it would be described as four and six usually. Uh, sometimes it's four and six pence, um, but quite often four and six. And uh, if your item had pound shillings and pence, so as an example, uh, one pounds nineteen and eleven, which was quite a favourite price point, i.e., just below two pounds, one pounds nineteen shillings and eleven pennies, it would be written like this, um, and it would be described as one pound nineteen and eleven. Um, so that's that's the coins, and that's how we actually wrote them. However, now we come to the, the crunch bit, adding up. Um, amounts uh, generally required mental arithmetic um, because machines couldn't do it easily there were machines that could add up but generally using this system um, it was mental arithmetic um, and um, I was forever in my life grateful to my late mother who worked in the post office um, for most of her life and was absolutely spot on at um, mental arithmetic she had to balance her books every night uh, and she taught me um, how to add up uh, reasonably quickly um, so I, I, as a way to sort of show you this I'm, I'm going to do um, uh, just a little example um, of, of, a, of a bill that um, we're going to add up and I'll show you how how quickly um, we would used to add up mentally. So, just as a, a, a little example here, um, so this is uh, an imaginary bill um, for a uh, Ruthann car of, of Glen Hugan. Hope you don't mind me using this, Ruthann. Um, so, here's some items uh, that imaginary items that uh, Ruthann has uh, ordered from us, and, and these are the individual prices. And so, we have to add this up. So, the way you would do it is you have to add up the, the pence and then the shillings and then the pounds. Um, so this is the way I was taught it. So you would go 11, uh, 1 and 5, 1 and 11, 2 and, 2 and 10, 3 and 4. So you've worked out that's 3 shillings and 4 pence. You'd write the 4 there and you'd carry forward the 3 and you'd write the 3 there. So you've, you've had to mentally work out 
12 pennies in each uh, shilling there. So we've got three and four. So then we do the same here. We go uh, three, four, six, 16, um, one pounds, <laughs> one pounds 15, um, and uh, two pounds seven shillings. Yep. A wee bit slower than I used to be. Um, so you carry forward the two pounds. Um, and then here you just do exactly the same, so you add another pound, so it's two, four, five, ten. So that would be Ruth Ann's bill, ten pounds, seven and four, please, Ruth Ann. Thank you so much. So I hope you could understand that little example there um, of, of uh, the mental arithmetic and how you would add up bills and that's generally how people did, uh, did all the calculations. But this of course is what led ultimately um, to the introduction of, of a decimal system um, in Scotland and the United Kingdom. Um, it was because the age, the digital age, was arriving and digital calculators were coming onto the scene. And they, digital calculators, cannot add up this old-fashioned system. Um, so what happened was uh, on the 15th of February 1971, uh, Scotland, along with the rest of the United Kingdom um, and Ireland as well, uh, became amongst the last of the countries uh, in the world um, to leave behind um, this ancient monetary system that had been in use um, for centuries. Um, and we, on that day, we, which was called Decimal Day, we adopted our new decimal system, which has a, a one pound and 100 pennies in a pound. Um, so despite all the advantages uh, of the new system, which obviously is, is Yes, it's so easy to count up and digit we're in this digital age and we need to do that. Um, I suspect many, many people in Scotland have fond memories for the, the old coins and the old systems. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this little historical insight again. Um, if, you, if you do, please give me a like if you, if you could and, and share this with your friends. That would be lovely. Um, as always, we, I'll put this onto my YouTube channel, which is called Gordon Scotland. If you ever want to, to check out all my videos, that's where you'll, you'll find them. Please remember, keep yourself safe, of course, during these difficult times. And until we all meet again, which we will, I just want to wish you all the very best from Scotland. <laughs>